Hey, 42 here. In 1670, John Ray coined the phrase, the early bird catches the worm. Before him, it is well to be up before daybreak, for such habits contribute to health, wealth and wisdom, said Aristotle. Lose an hour in the morning, and you will be all day hunting for it, proclaimed Richard Waitley. It is drilled into our heads throughout our entire lives that it's better for us to get to bed early and wake up at the crack of dawn. In doing so, we can supposedly get more dawn and live richer, happier lives. So, when do you like to go to bed? 30% of the population are night owls. They prefer to go to bed late and wake up late, sometime in the afternoon. Whereas 40% of people are morning larks, they are more than happy to wake up at the crack of dawn, but go to bed early. And the remaining 30% of people are somewhere in between, but usually have a slight leaning towards preferring either the evening or the morning. This is referred to by scientists as your chronotype. So, what's your chronotype? The issue that night owls have is they are often socially shunned. They are called lazy and immature. People often wrongly assume that a night owl's inability to wake up early is by choice, and they are berated for this their entire lives. But the truth is, such people may not be able to help their late rising, and forcing night owls to wake up early can actually have disastrous health consequences. As far as scientists have observed, all creatures on Earth with lifespans more than a few days are subject to a circadian river in Latin circa, meaning around, and diem for day. It is the natural 24-hour repeating sleep-wake cycle that determines when we feel drowsy and it's time for sleep, and it also hints to our bodies when they should awaken from their slumber. Controlled by the rather awesome-sounding suprachiasmatic nucleus, a tiny part of your brain inside your hypothalamus, the suprachiasmatic nucleus is your internal clock. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is excellent at keeping time without any external influence. In 1962, French geologist Michel Cifre spent two months deep underground in a cave where not a splash of light was able to reach him. He found that his circadian rhythm was able to keep his sleep-wake routine accurate to around 24 hours, but it would often overshoot by up to half an hour. This revealed that our suprachiasmatic nucleus is great at approximating time, but without a fixed reference it is unable to maintain it precisely, to the minute. We now know that the suprachiasmatic nucleus synchronizes itself and thus our circadian rhythm with the sun. Interestingly, however, if you were to, hypothetically, live in a permanently dark environment with no sun, such as your mother's basement, and perhaps you do, then your circadian rhythm would sync itself to any other consistency that happens on a repeating 24-hour cycle, such as temperature fluctuations or, remarkably, even your daily morning coffee. These time-aligning events are called Zeitgebers, literally time giver, and they are how blind people maintain their circadian rhythms. There are two important chemicals involved in sleep, melatonin and adenosine. Melatonin, released by the pineal gland, communicates with our suprachiasmatic nucleus, telling it when it's time for sleepiness to kick in. It is released in large amounts around our typical bedtime, or annoyingly when you really want to watch just one more episode of that Netflix series. Its release slows down whilst we sleep, eventually halting production altogether when it's time for us to wake up. Think of adenosine, however, like sleep pressure. It is released in increasing quantities throughout the day, and it swells up more in volume in our bloodstream the longer that we are awake. It actually slows down our neurons, which causes us to feel drowsy. After this sleep pressure builds up to extreme levels, we can no longer fight sleep. You know that feeling when you're at your desk during the early afternoon and your head suddenly drops into a micro slumber and then your neck snaps it back up because you would hate to be fired from yet another job for sleeping at your desk? This is because the levels of adenosine in your body have caused your neurons to slow down to such a level that you can no longer physically stay awake. A power nap is in order. 
This afternoon drowsiness happens to us all since adenosine release spikes during the afternoon and then again just before bedtime. So perhaps siestas are just meant to be after all. Although research has shown that this afternoon drowsiness only occurs in people who regularly fail to get sufficient sleep at night time. So if you have experienced this, then you need to get more sleep. Adenosine and your circadian rhythm are completely independent but related systems. If you have ever pulled an all-nighter, you will have experienced adenosine in action and how it jostles for control with your circadian rhythm. During the first day, adenosine, or sleep pressure, builds up in your system as per normal. And by that evening, your circadian rhythm decides that it's time for you to sleep and you will feel tired. But if you can make it through this period of extreme drowsiness and low energy levels until the following morning, then you will experience a second wind. But why? Adenosine will never stop being released and broken down until you actually sleep. By morning, the adenosine levels in your body will have reached extremely high levels, but nonetheless, you will have a new rush of energy during this time because your circadian rhythm doesn't care that you haven't actually slept. It keeps marching on relentlessly up and down every 24 hours along with the cycle of the sun. Your superchiasmatic nucleus is an accurate but somewhat blind timepiece. So when morning does come, your circadian rhythm does its usual wake up routine and infuses your body with a rush of energy that will last you throughout the morning. This overrides the neural slowdown caused by all that built up adenosine. However, as the afternoon draws in on your second day without sleep, your circadian rhythm starts to wind down your body as bedtime draws closer yet again. But this time, the adenosine levels in your body have built up to such unholy levels that they are ready to burst. So when these two independent systems once again sync up with one another, you will experience an almighty energy crash and sleep is almost inevitable. Research on 90,000 DNA samples collated by 23andMe reveal that our bias towards being a night owl or a morning lark is roughly 50% due to our DNA. And it can never be altered, although it does usually shift slightly more towards a morning bias as we grow older. It's believed that this genetical chronotype is inherited from our parents. It's thought that the reason that the population is split in their DNA preferences for earlier or later bedtimes is that in our hunter-gatherer days, having this divide played a crucial and beneficial role. It's hardly surprising that in our prehistoric days, when we lived in tribes and we had rival tribes and deadly predators stalking the forests and plains of an evening, that having some members of the tribe awake at all times was quite handy. As long as Bob and Steve were awake from 12am until 5am when Dave usually woke up, then they could keep an eye out for Dave. And then Dave would continue the watch after Bob and Steve fell asleep at 5am. How nice of Dave. Evolution thus determines that hard wiring varying peaks and troughs of awakeness and sleepiness for a portion of the population, then it would ensure that there would always be at least one person awake in each tribe to keep watch. Because these people would feel naturally inclined to still be awake whilst others weren't, and more importantly, they would still be alert. We can shift our circadian rhythm somewhat by up to an hour each night, if we change our sleeping pattern, but we will always have a natural circadian template, a default time of the day when we are biologically predetermined to fall asleep based on our immutable DNA. Scientists have now recently been able to sequence and observe the unique DNA in each of us that causes these variations in our chronotypes. So being a night owl is in your DNA. And whether or not you are actually lazy, the fact that you may struggle to wake up early may not be your fault, but is in fact hardwired in your biology. Just like an actual owl, the brain of a night owl functions best in the evening. When they wake up, their prefrontal cortex, the front part of the brain that is responsible for logic and decision making, is still offline. That's why sometimes you go to work in your slippers. MRI brain scans of night owls have revealed 
that this part of the brain, in particular, has a warm-up phase, where it will slowly ramp up in life over the course of the morning and reach peak efficiency in the late afternoon or early evening for some people. Morning larks are the complete opposite. Their prefrontal cortex is at its peak at dawn, and it loses effectiveness as the evening draws in. This begs an important question. If 30% of the population are unable to use their brains in the morning, are employers making a mistake by forcing such people to come into work at 9am at a time when these people are unable to work efficiently and they may make more mistakes in the workplace? Furthermore, asking these people to wake up and come to work so early can be detrimental to their health. Some people may belligerently proclaim, I'll sleep when I'm dead. But these people will be dead very soon. Because over 20 reputable studies have been conducted on the relationship between sleep and health. Overwhelmingly, these studies have found that people who don't get the required eight hours of sleep per night die sooner. Adults older than 45 who sleep less than six hours per night are 200% more likely to have a heart attack or stroke. And at any age, evidence suggests that if you sleep for less than six hours per night for a period of 14 years, then your risk of heart disease increases by a whopping 500%. Generally, a lack of sleep has been strongly linked to an increased risk of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and dementia. So then it seems that more flexible work schedules are needed worldwide that are better tailored to the sleeping habits of individuals. Employers will be rewarded with employees who work harder, smarter, more efficiently, and most importantly, don't die so damn quickly. If you are a night owl and you suspect that your inability to wake up and function early in the morning is holding you back in life, then I encourage you to change your mind. Research conducted at Southampton University analyzed the sleeping habits, i.e. chronotype, health, and the wealth of over 1,000 subjects in England. Contrary to what every soothsaying business guru has ever told you, night owls were found to be, on average, wealthier than morning larks. Those who went to bed later had a larger mean income and were more likely to own a car. And the later study also found that night owls were slightly more intelligent than morning larks. Interestingly, these results were still true even when the participants took intelligence tests again in the morning instead of the afternoon. Night owls still outperformed morning larks during a time of the day when their neural functionality is supposed to be suboptimal. It's not all bad news for morning chronotypes, however. In 2012, psychologists at the University of Toronto studied over 200 people and found that morning larks are happier and generally have a better mood throughout the day. They are also more agreeable, more cooperative, and more conscientious. Thanks for watching. I've recently launched my first book, which I'm crowdfunding. Stick a flag in it, a thousand years of bizarre history from Britain and beyond. I'm so pleased to announce that the crowdfunding campaign has now reached 100%, so it's definitely going to be published, which is amazing. But there are still stretch goals to reach. So, if you want a first edition signed copy, then head on over to Unbound, the link's in the description. Watch the launch video if you haven't already, and pledge today. Thank you.